There are a lot of racetracks in this world, but unfortunately some of these tracks have disappeared over the past century for several reasons, whether it be bankruptcy, lack of interest, or even safety. But that lack of safety is what made some of these tracks so legendary between spectators and drivers alike. Thankfully, these old tracks can be resurrected and driven again through the power of video games. For example, Gran Turismo 6 brought us the old layout of Brands Hatch. And in Project Cars 2, we have the classic Hoggenheim, Spa, and Rouen Les Arts circuits. So, in this video, we'll discover 7 tracks of the past that should be included in future racing games. And this is a personal list, and of course there are a lot of more forgotten racetracks that should be mentioned, so so let me know in the comments which forgotten tracks you would put on this list. First opening in 1957, Riverside International Raceway has hosted races from championships such as Formula One, NASCAR, IndyCar, and IMSA up until 1989, where sadly the circuit was closed and replaced by a shopping center. However, in 2003, a project was announced for a new 4.8 kilometer racetrack to be built in Merced, California, with a design similar to that of Riverside International Raceway. The circuit would have been called Riverside Motorsports Park, but sadly this project was abandoned in 2009. The beauty of this track was lined with long straights interspersed with large sweeping hairpins. Overtaking was easy on this track thanks to its width and battles were frequent. The final curve was slightly banked, allowing drivers to carry high speeds around it, which also required considerable physical effort to maintain these high speeds. Before we had Catalonia and Jerez, the Montjuic Street Circuit was the host of the Formula One Spanish Grand Prix in the early 1970s, as well as the Spanish Motorbike Grand Prix dating back as early as 1950. This track was not too terribly long, measuring at under 4 kilometers, featuring lots of tight hairpins and other sharp corners in the first half with the second half of the track opening up with some wide, long sweeping corners. With lots of elevation changes and walls tightly enclosing the track, memorization was key for going quick around this circuit. For one small mistake, could end up with 
your race over. Unfortunately, tragedy struck in 1975, where at least four spectators lost their lives in an accident, prompting Formula One to never return to this circuit. In an effort to improve the city's public image, the city of Detroit would host a third United States Formula One Grand Prix around its streets in 1982. The circuit was much wider and faster than other street circuits such as Monaco, but that didn't make the Detroit circuit any easier, with many teams classifying seeing the checkered flag as an excellent result. The difficulty lied within its many tight 90 degree corners at the end of long straights requiring heavy braking in the sometimes very bumpy braking zones. The track would also host the SCCA Trans Am series beginning in 1984, as well as the Kart series for three years, until the circuit was moved to Belle Isle in 1992. While the Belle Isle circuit is still used to this day, the original layout has been lost to time.
built on the roads surrounding an extinct volcano, the Circuit Clermont-Ferrand hosted four Formula One Grand Prix between 1965 and 1972, as well as the French Motorcycle Grand Prix on ten occasions between 1950 and 1974. Referred to as the French Nürburgring, this fast and twisty 8km street course featured many elevation changes and little room to rest, as one corner was usually quickly followed by another equally difficult turn. With its volcanic setting, safety was a major issue with the circuit, as rocks were constantly swept onto the roads, causing many punctures throughout its races. In 1989, a shorter 4km layout was made using much of the southern section of the track. This shorter layout, now known as the Circuit de Charade, was used primarily for track days and historic events, and eventually was closed as a public road, making it a permanent racing circuit.
built at the same time as the famous Nordschleife, the Nürburgring Südschleife was a 7.5 km circuit located directly south of the Nordschleife. The two tracks were so close to each other that they could be driven as one 28 km behemoth circuit. Just like its big brother, the Sutschleife featured narrow, twisty roads and lots of elevation changes. Unfortunately for the South Loop, the Nordschleife became the much more popular circuit, making races exclusively around the Sutschleife fairly rare throughout its existence. This would also lead to the Sudschleife being partially destroyed and replaced in the early 1980s with the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. Part of the Sudschleife still exists today and is used as a public road and also provides access to the parking areas for the Grand Prix circuit. The Automobile Verkehrs and U-Bahn Strauss was a fairly simple high-speed circuit ran on a German motorway with its first race taking place in 1921. The circuit was originally 19 kilometers in length with two straights measuring over 9 kilometers each, interrupted at the south end by a very sharp hairpin and at the north end by an extremely high-banked sweeper. The north turn was banked an astonishing 43 degrees higher than that of the Daytona International Speedway and even the original Monza Oval. Over time, the southern hairpin was moved multiple times, eventually shortening the circuit to just 2.6 kilometers in total length. The banking for the north turn was also demolished in 1967 as international racing associations deemed these banked turns too dangerous for Grand Prix racing. Since its final races in the late 1990s, the circuit has remained a busy motorway and the old wooden grandstand remains as a protected historic monument.
beginning in 1906. The Targa Florio was an open road endurance race taking place on the Italian island of Sicily. While early events took place around a lap of the entire island, later races were held around the 72 kilometer Circuito Piccolo del Madoni. The circuit itself was one of the most dangerous in the world, with lots of narrow roads and tight corners with very few walls to protect drivers and spectators in the event of an accident. The roads were also open to the public during practice and qualifying sessions, meaning racers and pedestrians alike had to be very careful when driving around the island. Luckily, come race day, the streets were closed to the public, allowing racers to use as much of the road as needed. Races were run here until 1977, where the event was discontinued over safety concerns. Until recently, these streets were still ran competitively as part of the Italian Rally Championship with the now famous Targa Florio moving to Australia in 2017. Throughout history, the focus of safety in motorsports has grown exponentially over the years, but through the urge to advance safety, some of the spectacle of racing has been lost. Keeping races and racing circuits safe and exciting will always be a difficult compromise to make, and we hope that it will never spell the end of the sport we all know and love. Thankfully, at least some of the excitement of the past can be relived through the magic of video games. Thanks for watching.